for landlords by landlords the rent perfect podcast with david pickrock Oh, yeehaw. We are here again, Scotty. How are you? I'm so glad to be back in the saddle. Welcome back. Yes. It's been a few episodes. Yes. We've had legal take over my spot. I'm glad yeah. to give it away, but sometimes I miss uh, miss having the interaction with our audience and well, with you as we talk about And I'm certainly industry. grateful for Denny. He's such yeah. a powerful person, a great career, and adds so much with what T has. So I want to thank him, yep. but always glad to have you back. Yeah. yeah. You give a little bit more lighter of a kind of a podcast. Yeah, you, you know, know, I like jokes. Your little quips and your little yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, I certainly appreciate you having here as a, a sidekick. But, um, hey, we'd like you to like and subscribe. Uh, you know, we put some time into this and just want to really help people out. And that's, I think, our whole goal is yep. just to, you know, get you thinking about, uh, you know, maybe making a decision in one way or another, whether it's buying or selling or holding or managing yeah. or yeah lowering and raising rents whatever yes, whatever just, it is we just want to help we just never know i think we could do a podcast a day with what comes across our desk and so we're grateful for you today for, for you to be here with us today so maybe i should have a little glass of water here yeah, there you go there you go get ready it is interesting right now right I, when you think about i mean when i was a kid i thought um, the land maybe a landlord would be just like the guy that you gave the check to once a month mm-hmm. and that there would be nothing in the news about landlords or about you know, no, managing boring, properties. Right? Boring, yeah, boring, right? right. Yeah. But, yeah, like you said, if you look at the current news today, type in uh, latest landlord incidents, it's a colorful bunch. Yeah, we, we are a hot, hot topic yeah. today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not sure I like to be the hot topic no. of the day. I kind of liked boring at that point. I didn't yeah. realize it. <laughs> yeah. But I really did like it. Uh, but, you know, we see some trends happening in the last year with a lot of our clients and a lot of people are selling their portfolios. A lot of people are saying, you know, I'm a little later in life. I've had these for a while. They've been good to me. Um, interest rates are, are high. Uh, prices are high. Um, but it's time to, to let these go yeah. and, and get on to the next chapter of our lives. And, and it doesn't seem like we have enough young people behind us to kind of pick that up. Right. Which we're certainly hoping... Uh, and when I'm out at speaking at RIAs and I see young people, I'm always approaching them and talking to them and saying, hey, how can we help you find success in this mm-hmm. business? Because this is an older man's business. It, it really is, is. Yeah. And um, so that's what we like you to like and subscribe and share us. If you have any kids, grandkids, anybody that, uh, you know, is just thinking about getting into real estate, uh, just have them peek over to us. We'll, uh, you know, give them the 10 or 15 yeah. minute rundown of what's going on for the day. But uh, but I love this business, Scotty. I love this business. And it doesn't mean that everything goes perfect. It doesn't mean I wake up in the morning and my life is just great. In fact, I have to constantly be making adjustments, right? Yep. And I know you've done the same thing. Yeah, so yeah. Probably about four or five years ago, I started getting into short-term rentals. A um, little higher, um, you know, time spent on it you know, like I, I would spend more time on it right. uh, but a higher return right so high time high return mm-hmm. uh long term for me was low time low return but uh but but took the appreciation but i noticed a while back that appreciation here in our local area is kind of dying a little bit so plateaued I, right i, I wanted to get a little bit more monthly cash flow and yeah. so i went to to short-term rentals and i know you grabbed one yep. of those yep to and and put your hand in the, in the pie and which and they were phenomenal yeah they did really, really well. And I have ones that are really, really performing right now. But I just did kind of my year's um, review on every single one of my properties, how much rent I brought in, how much mm-hmm. am I paying on mortgage, how much am I paying on repairs, and uh, just really analyzing how much am I making on my investments. Yeah. Our tax season will do that to you, right? Yes, we have to start exactly. analyzing. So One hundred percent. And so... Um, I got to a couple properties that I have up in a small town in northern Arizona and uh, bought them for the right price. I'm in them well. Um, first year that we, we short-turned them seemed pretty dang good. But this last year, um, they have fallen a little bit where I did not make hardly any money off them. Just yeah. barely broke even, right? And, you know, it makes me think, and the reason we're talking today is, Just because we buy something and something's great one day doesn't mean that it's going to continue to be great or be great today, you know? 
Yeah. And you know me very well. I fall in love with my property. Yes, you right? do. Yes, you do. Yep. So I go through this whole thing this last week on, hey, should I put them up for sale? Should I turn them back into, you know, short-term rentals? I love these properties. I couldn't I couldn't imagine me selling them. Kind of like, like giving away your kids. Giving right, right, away yeah, my yeah, kids, yeah, yeah, right, right. you know? <laughs> um, but I had to sit back and say, hey, listen, why are you really doing this? What are you doing? You know, why are you building a portfolio mm-hmm. or changing your management style? Um it's really for my kids in the future. It's yeah. really for my future investments. Uh, and I'm not looking to own something that just takes a, a lot of my time and then break even. Because right now I can go down to my bank, put a CD in, in the bank for six months and get 5%, 5% interest, yeah, right? right? So if I'm not making 5% on my properties with the amount of money I'm spending, yeah. and especially a short-term rental that you're – Every weekend having it cleaned and, right. and, and changing and stuff's block breaking codes and, and, and yeah, I mean it's yeah, just yeah. You better be making quite a quite a bit of money and so, um, and then I go back to why why was it so good a year ago and why is it it not really performing now and and, and the only thing I can really come up with is that people's mo- you know blow away money it's just it's just yeah, going, it's away, going away yeah you know and um, these little weekend trips that people used to take they're just not taking anymore. And there are so many things that I'm seeing in the real estate and outside of real estate where, you know, I mean, how is the stock market at, at 40,000, record right. stock market? But I just think there's an underlying thing going on in this country where it's not real good for people. Yeah. You know, and uh, and I think the stock market is a sign of how well the rich, rich, rich are doing. The wealthy rich yeah. are doing, right? But for most of our this disposable income has been has taken a hit, right? And those short term rentals really is disposable income. Let's go have yeah, you like you're saying let's, let's go, go have, have a weekend fun, right? fun yeah. and let's yeah. you know go. I up mean, I, my property up in Utah, it's you know, next to the ski resort. Our first year, it, December, I was getting nine hundred a night right. for a two bedroom, right? Right. This last year, I honestly couldn't give it away for like maybe two fifty a night. I mean, yeah. that's a pretty big ding. Yeah. In in the cash flow, and I was at about two twenty five a night, and then I'm I'm not up next to a ski resort, yeah. so I'm not pulling in that kind of money. Um, but I'll be lucky now to get one sixty a night. Yeah, you know, on a three bedroom, that uh, that I can't put the cleaning fee too high, or that 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 yeah, that drives away, away too. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but the point of this podcast and the point of just kind of talking about this is things change, and uh, and that means you need to change. And if you stick in in the rut, um, y- you're not going to be a great investor. Mm-hmm. Right? You may hang on to something. You might lose money. Maybe you have the money to lose. I don't know. But for me, I'm at the part of my life where I'm just every year I'm reviewing my properties and I'm making decisions solely on how much money uh, they're bringing in the door. Or if, if they're appreciating yeah. too, right? I don't even mind losing a little bit of money per month if I know on the appreciation end I'm yeah. gaining. But I'm not really appreciating and I'm not really gaining a whole lot. So it tells me that these properties need to go. Mm-hmm. I'll take my appreciation, the down payment I put on them. I'll take that money and I'll go find something that is producing. Right. I've talked to a ton of short-term rental owners now. And I will tell you with the government regulations and now these cities are coming around putting on all kinds of requirements, permits, you know, um, I had to get uh, fire sprinklers in one if I wanted to continue as a short-term rental. Um, I have to hang like four and five signs around my property. And, and, and the whole point of a short-term rental, a home, is to be at a home, not yeah. be in a hotel room with, you know, the map to the closest right. exit right, down right, the, right. Yeah. you know, the <laughs> fire escape. But yeah. um, but anyways, it's just things things change, and that happens, and we need to be flexible and change with it. And so... Now I'm look, got those on the market. I, I yeah. plan on having those sold within the next month or two, and uh, I'll be looking for maybe the next thing out there that's going to pay us uh, some money. Yeah, and, Be- uh, better than a two percent return. Better than a two yeah, percent return. Sure. And so, uh, just to say it again, go ahead and review every single one of your properties by itself, and see what it's doing for you. And don't be afraid if it's not quite producing anymore. Let it go. There's plenty out right. there to find here in the next year. And if you need to bank some money right now, hey, bank some money because with this underlying thing we're talking about, I think there is some great opportunity coming, whether it's going to be on the foreclosure market mm-hmm. um, or there's going to be a, a ton of homes for sale that's just going to drive the price of homes down a little bit. Yeah. So opportunity is coming. I don't need to be scary or negative, but uh, 
ditch those things now that aren't making you money and get ready for a big windfall in the future because if we judge the future uh, by looking at the past, these waves come. Yeah, and there's, there's uh, money to be made still out there. And, and we've made plenty of money in these mm-hmm. waves over our lifetime. So with that said, we certainly appreciate you being here. And until next time, continue to rent. Perfect.